Hi guys and welcome to one more Rui Raptor video. Today we are going to show you the biggest printer we tested so far. Ok, it's not the biggest printer. It's actually the smallest printer we tested so far. It's the Nano 3D printer from EasyTreat. This printer is only 188 by 188 by 198 millimeters and weighs only 1 kilogram. The print volume is 90 by 110 by 110 millimeters and it's available in the colors white and orange. The printer is delivered fully assembled and should be ready to print in 5 minutes. Packed together with the printer is a box with lots of stuff inside and Rui will tell you more about it. Hey you guys! Inside the box we can find the USB cable, 3D printed parts that will make the spool holder, the power cord, the external power supply, a user manual, a memory card and adapter, a spatula, a Phillips screwdriver, and a small spool of white PLA filament. The external power supply can handle input voltages between 100 volts and 240 volts and its output is 12 volts and 5 amps. The user manual is small but very detailed and with a lot of information. The printer is equipped with four removable panels that you can easily remove to access its interior. The printer is very simple to operate. At the front side there is only one button. This button has three functions. Start the print, raise the Z and pause the print. But we will cover this in more detail in just a moment. At the back of the printer we have the power in connector, the USB connector, the memory card slot and a load and unload switch. Before turning on the printer we need to remove the parts that secure the access during transportation. The print head is very small and it includes the extruder and the X-axis motor inside. It's all covered up including the nozzle where only the tip is exposed. There is a hot end fan facing the back side but no layer cooling fan. At the top we have a bit of PTFE tube and here is where we must insert the filament. The X and Y axis move on 4 mm smooth rods and by 3 mm wide belts. Under the bed you have the main board, the Z and the Y axis stepper motors. For the Z-axis it uses four threaded rods, one on each corner. At one corner we can see the Z end stop switch. The bed is not heated and the print surface is magnetic and flexible, making the task to remove the prints from the surface easy to do. The spool holder is made from three 3D printed parts and very easy to assemble. We just slide in the two bigger pieces at the top side of the printer and the third one is just placed over the other ones. 
This spool holder will only work with these small filament spools. So if you want to use bigger ones, you need to get an external spool holder. The power cord that we received is not compatible with our outlets, but we easily replaced with a compatible one. There is no power on and off switch on the printer, so connecting the power cord will automatically turn on the printer. At that time, we can see the button at the front light up. Pressing the button for more than 3 seconds will raise the Z a few millimeters. For the first test, we will use the included PLA filament. To load the filament, we need to insert the filament in the PTFE tube and slide the back switch to the feed side. This will heat up the hot end and load the filament. Once we see the filament coming out from the nozzle, we need to slide back the switch to the middle position. To unload the filament, we just slide the switch to the retract position and wait for the filament to be unloaded. The only calibration needed is the bed leveling. There are four screws at the corners to level the bed. You can use a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper to level it, but we found that it's much easier to just load a wide model and adjust it while printing. It's not an easy task, but doable. We uploaded this STL on Thingiverse, so check the video description for the link. The printer does not have any display, so you cannot change any setting or select the file to print. There is also no option to home all the axes, and you will need to home the axes to level the bed before printing, so you have two options. One, you level the bed while printing, like we mentioned before, or you make a G-code file with nothing but the G28 command and save it to the memory card. When you press the button to start the print, it will run the home command and stop. Inside the adapter, we can find the memory card. This card includes a demo G-code file, manuals and a slicer for this printer. To start the print, just do a quick press on the front button and wait. Once you press the button to print, the light will start to blink, meaning that the nozzle is heating up. You can print directly on the print surface, but as usual, we decided to print over masking tape instead. The printer will always print the latest file that is in the memory card. For the first test, we printed the already sliced model that is inside the memory card. The manual recommends to use print speeds not higher than 20 mm per second, which is very slow. For the next test, we used the slicer that came with the printer and also Cura and Simplify 3D with our own profile. The slicer that came with the printer is called EasyWare. It's a very simple slicer, but the main advantage is that it comes prepared to work with this printer. As for print settings, you can choose between custom where you can define all the print settings or one key where you can choose between fast, standard or optimized. If you select fast, it will take less time and will print with less quality. If you select optimize, it will take more time but it will have more quality. And if you select standard, it will be half of both worlds. We printed this Benchy with the optimize option and it took a bit more than 7 hours to print. We printed the same Benchy many times so that we could test different conditions such as printing with all the side panels installed, with all the panels except for the front one, 
and with no panels whatsoever. We also used a portable fan and tested printing with that fan running with all the panels except the front one to create a path of airflow and also with the fan running and no side panels. And the results are the following. The vase is 60 mm tall and it was not printed in vase mode. It took 11 hours to print and at a first glance it looks ok but after a close inspection we can tell some z-wobbling issues. The vase was printed with no panels installed and without our extra fan. From all the benches we selected the ones that better show the differences. These first ones show the differences between slicers. The one on the left was printed with the slicer that came with the printer and with the optimize option, and it took 7 hours to print. The one on the right was sliced with Simplify 3D, and although it took only 4 hours to print, it got better results. Here we can see the difference when printing with and without the panels. If we install the panels, the print results are much worse. The best result we got with this printer was using Simplify 3D and using our extra fan together with the back, left and right panels. These panels created a path for the air to go through and this way improving the performance. We also tested the same conditions with the Cura slicer, but the results were not as good. With this bear, we can clearly see the importance of having a layer cooling fan to cool the filament. Simple models will work better, even without the layer cooling fan. However, we still see a few issues here and there. This vase was printed in vase mode and with the extra fan. This print would never end up as good if we didn't use the extra fan. So in conclusion, these are the issues we found. The one that concerns us the most is related with the threaded rods. While moving the Z up and down, we can see that they are completely bent. This creates too much wobble on the axis and will affect the print quality. The second issue is the lack of a layer cooling fan. You will not be able to have good quality prints without one. The missing layer cooling fan and the very slow speed of the printer will make it hard to get good printing details. And if you combine that with the panels, you have a very bad combination. The panels will retain most of the heat inside, and the filament will not cool down. The third issue is the spool holder position. The manual indicates the spool holder to be installed at the left side, but if we install it there, the print head will collide with it every time it runs the home sequence. Also, if you print tall prints and near the edge, it will also collide with it. The fourth issue is the construction of the X and Y axis, which is too fragile. Even a simple pull of filament by the extruder while printing can make the entire print head move. As we mentioned before, the button at the front can also pause the print if we press it while printing. But we don't recommend using this feature because it will not raise the Z or move the nozzle away. Instead, it will just stop and melt the model. Probably, many of you will think that this price is too high and that there are better options within this price range. And you are right. But the manufacturer's idea was to design a small and portable printer that was easy to work with and that kids could also use. The panels will keep the hands away from the nozzle and from the moving parts, but the print quality will be worse. When printing without the panels, and because it's not equipped with a layer cooling fan, 
the room temperature will also have an impact on the print quality. Aside from the issues, this printer has some positive things such as being compact and small, comes fully assembled, and it's easy to use. Meanwhile, the printer can be an interesting toy and a motivation for kids to learn about the 3D printing world. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. If you like our video, give us a like. And if you would like to help us make more cool videos, you can support the channel with Patreon or PayPal. Keep following us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next time. Bye!